what do you think is the likelihood of uh, China attacking Taiwan anytime soon? A lot of people think it is more likely than not. So I've been talking about this for a long time. I think it is quite high. I think it goes up for every every little bit. It goes up further. I think it was not going to happen before October of last year. That's when Xi Jinping took over his third term as leader of the CCP. He didn't want to disrupt the apple cart. But now that he's taken over, it'd be the perfect opportunity to show and project force. There's a Taiwanese election coming up in 2024. There's a U.S. election, presidential election coming up in 2024. If I were in their shoes, you would look at the current U.S. president and say that's a pretty good bet for somebody who's not going to take actually the right actions to deter this. That creates a potential window. Add to that the fact that the U.S. is actually retreating and actually even retiring some of its ships in the South China Sea. That creates a potential nadir of U.S. naval capacity in the South China Sea right when China is actually ramping up its shipping production and its naval capacity as well. So I think it's unfortunately the imperfect confluence, which is to say, from China's standpoint, the perfect confluence of forces and alignment of the stars to say that that moment to go after Taiwan could be coming sooner than we want. And I think this balloon was really, if I may say, a trial balloon right. to say that, you know what, we're going to invade your sovereignty, see what you're going to do about it. If the U.S. didn't do anything meaningful for that, then I think that's a test to say that the U.S. may not do anything meaningful right. and they'll also, in China's eyes. And China Taiwan will also either. be watching like a hawk what's happening in Ukraine and seeing how big a stomach for the fight the Americans have, right? Because there are, there are increasing rumblings on the Republican side in particular in the United States that they shouldn't be spending all this money uh, waging, you know, a war, sort of proxy war, helping the Ukrainians defeat Vladimir Putin. Uh, they should be spending it on more uh, pressing domestic issues. But I would argue against that, that if you let Putin win in Ukraine, that's a green light, I would say, for China to go into Taiwan. Well, it's one step deeper than that, Pierce, if I may. We don't depend on Russia for our modern way of life. In fact, even in the last Cold War, the U.S. did not depend on the Soviet Union for the shoes on our feet or the phones in our pocket. But the precarious position with China, and I think this is the defining aspect of this Cold War in the 21st century, is the U.S. depends on its rival, its enemy, for powering its modern way of life, from the clothes we wear to the electronics that we use. And that's what makes it so difficult to face down China relative to facing down Russia. So I actually think that it's in some ways it, it's a disanalogy because even if the U.S. could take on Vladimir Putin, that's the easy part. In fact, you know, do, do, do a thought experiment. Imagine this was a Russian spy balloon. There is little doubt in my mind that the thing the U.S. would have done was to shoot it down instantly and ratchet up sanctions on Russia. Mm. And the reason they didn't do it on China is because the U.S. depends on China for our modern way of life. You know, the U.S. declared independence from the folks on your side of the pond in 1776. I think 2023 or 2024 needs to be the year that the U.S. declares independence from China, or else there's no chance of actually being you know, able to You know to who's been saying that militarily. for 40 years? Donald Trump. It was one of, the, one of the things he was spot on <laughs> about. I remember interviewing Donald Trump 15 years ago and him telling me exactly that. He, just got a, he said China is basically pillaging the U.S. without the U.S. really realising what's going on. And it looks like he, he was right.